Okay, so it's Sunday, April 23rd, and I'd like to follow up on the last video um, to, first of all, uh, summarize. We said that the whole problem with um, seeing the uh, hypostatic property of the father as being uncaused is that he's just taking a, an attribute of the divine nature. The divine nature is uncaused. And yet uh, the father and the son, excuse me, the son and the spirit, do not have as hypostatic properties um, unoriginateness, and therefore they do not participate in the nature to the extent that the father does. And therefore what inadvertently happens is that the, the Orthodox, specifically, but Christianity in general, um, they, they reduce the father to the divine nature. And in doing so, they grant... Um, that the father is more than the son and the spirit in terms of the level, his level of participation in the divine nature or the extent to which he corresponds with the divine nature, the degree to which he corresponds to the divine nature. And therefore you have subordinationism where you, the son and the spirit are ultimately collapsed into the person of the father. They're subsumed under and collapsed in and collapse into the father. That's step one. And then step two is where because the father's hypostatic property is just a borrowing of a property or attribute of the divine nature, you turn the father into the divine nature. So what the reason I'm bringing this up again is because I have to, um, I have to stress that ultimately um, the Eastern Orthodox position on the Trinity is just simply a more sophisticated uh, variant or version of absolute divine simplicity. You get um, Eastern Orthodox apologists. Um, I'm thinking specifically of guys like Jay Dyer, very popular Eastern Orthodox apologist who gets on YouTube and uh, often criticizes the Western tradition, Christian tradition, particularly Rome, of falling into absolute divine simplicity. Well, the, the East just does the same thing. It's just, it just takes a longer route to get there, and it's harder to see how it gets there, but it gets there nonetheless. So Christianity in general reduces to abs this absolute divine simplicity that the apologists are trying so hard to avoid. Um, so, that, so, so you have absolute divine simplicity, that's what it ultimately boils down to. And then if you combine that with the fact, with the doctrine of creation ex nihilo, you have the fact that the world is considered ontologically separate from God. Therefore, there is a, a reality or a space in which God does not fully participate. God is not fully present. Um you know, it's one thing to be panentheistic, but that doesn't solve the problem. Panentheism is saying all is in God, and there may be some sense in which they can maintain the belief that all is in God. But if you can't maintain the belief that God is in everything, in the sense of God is essentially identified with everything, um, then there is a that that then you've got a situation where, um you have two realities existing in parallel, but neither of which are infinite because if they were infinite, um, there would just be one unbounded reality. Now, I'm, by the way, I'm not saying that, God, I'm not, I'm not taking a pantheistic view, the like more modern pantheistic view in which pantheism is defined as creation is God. I believe that, 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 um, that, that the universe is, is an extension or an expansion of God. But I don't believe um, that God uh, is reducible to the universe. He's, he transcends that as well. Um, so now you have um, what Christianity essentially reduces to then is Judaism and Islam. Where you have this... Um, this um, mo uh, you have monotheism, but without distinctions, uh, without the distinction between you know nature essence or or excuse me nature energy and person, um, and then you have the 
<clears throat> the duality between God and creation. So ultimately, it all boils down to the Abrahamic faiths all boil down to the same thing. They're all ultimately reducible to the same thing. Uh, another, another thing, another way to show that God is ultimately finite in, uh, and, and therefore composite and divisible uh, in Christianity, uh, another way to just look at it, another way to see it is um, that because of this, <clears throat> since we've already seen that he's finite, right, due to, due to the fact that he's sort of set over and against the creation, which is ontologically separate from him, that determines that he is finite. And if he's finite, and every, anything that's finite has to be composite because it's no longer unbounded. It can be divided. It can be divisible into parts. So the three persons are ultimately divisible. As we already showed where we, when we broke down what happens when you make um, a hypostatic property of the Father an attribute of the nature. So... <clears throat> Mathematically, we know that three is a finite number because um, numbers can just go on indefinitely. You can keep adding one to every number without, without end. So no matter how high that number gets, the number is ultimately finite. Um, and then particularly when you place a boundary around it, right? If you say, if you put a boundary around a certain number and you say it can't go any higher or further than this, which is what they do with the Trinity, then it, then it becomes even clearer that we're dealing with a finite, composite, divisible entity. But even if it's, even if it's unbounded in the sense that you can keep adding ones, you know, ones to it indefinitely, if it's unbounded in the sense that it's not ultimately encompassed by the one, then you just have um, an infinite number of, of things that are <clears throat> autonomous and not ultimately connected. That's also obviously impossible. But the only way you have consist you can have consistency is if you have a god who is both one and also unbounded or infinite in terms of the number of uh things or objects it it uh uh produces so the universe has to be infinite with and I don't want to get too far into this because that's this is a whole other set of videos, which, of course, I'll be eventually um, given the opportunity getting into. But I just want to kind of show you where this is all heading. In order to consistently avoid making God uh, plural in the sense of um, being deprived of uh, unitedness or oneness. And in order to avoid, on the other hand, um, making God one without distinction, you have to allow for God to be um, infinite in terms of multiplicity while also being one, because one is the only number that can contain um, all number of objects, all multiplicities. So I guess uh, that pretty much um, fulfills the purpose for this video, is just to make it very clear that the East um, ultimately fails to avoid absolute divine simplicity. Um, the fathers, the, the Eastern Church fathers, repeatedly and clearly made it known that conflating nature and person was a heresy. <clears throat> 
they sincerely wanted to avoid that error. My only point is that they failed in that attempt. So they didn't have any, there was no malice there or any, any intention of being heretical. Um, they just failed to be consistent about avoiding that error, which they rightly wanted to avoid. So I, no longer being a Christian, am trying to uphold, and I believe that it must be upheld, the principle that there, that of, the, of this distinction between person and nature must be upheld. And that is the only way to recognize the, the personhood of God, to recognize that God is ultimately a person. But you can't do that by positing that there are multiple persons in God. God can only be a single person. And um, in the near future, I'll be making videos that explain how my position is able to maintain that God is a person, just a person, not more than one person. What it means for God to be infinite and how all of this um, influences uh, cosmology, um, how it influences anthropology, uh, all sorts of areas. I think though that that series will come after, um, the very next one I plan to do, which I'm thinking will probably only take up two or three videos, but you know, I could be wrong, obviously. The next series is going to be um, about who I believe Paul thought Jesus was. There was a very ancient uh, Jewish belief um, that was held not by a majority of Jews. The majority of Jews would have considered it heretical. At least Judaism after <clears throat> the, um, certainly Judaism after the Babylonian captivity. Um, but this position survived the millennia, and it continues to survive to an extent in um, in the Kabbalah, the tradition, the Kabbalah tradition, or the, the Jewish tradition of, of of Kabbalistic teaching. And it is called the two powers in heaven view. There are a couple of Jews, uh, Jewish scholars, um, who have written books on this. There's also a, a Russian. Uh, biblical scholar who's written books on this, and an American scholar, uh, I'll, I'll mention him now, uh, Richard um, Smoley, S-M-O-L-E-Y. There's a book that he wrote called How God Became God. I recommend reading that entire book, It's uh, but it's worth the money just for the one chapter, chapter 14, where he gets into this topic. Um, it was the belief they actually had a two powers view where they had an, a, 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 a semi-divine entity who was uh, thought of as a little Yahweh, so to speak. He was almost like the most powerful of all the celestial beings, right? Like a, like a very powerful archangel. And he was associated with the angel of the Lord or the angel of Yahweh. And he was identified as the one to whom the Jews were looking um, for, um, in terms of uh, the messiahship. And uh, it would have been a, um, what I would call, describe a proto, almost a, um, almost a proto-Aryan view. And I will also be arguing that Paul um, borrows heavily from, or philosophically, um, and his mysteriology to an extent, from Philo. Um, and that ultimately Paul was a proto-Aryan. Um, I won't go any further with that. I'll just kind of leave you with that because um, I'll also be getting, I'll of course be getting into all the details when that series starts, which will, I guess will be, I guess will be the next video, will be video one uh, uh, with, uh, on that uh, on that topic. So have a great Sunday, guys, and uh, signing out. Peace, thanks.